Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to build a new seat for the Formula Ford. And there is a very good reason why we're going to rebuild that seat because here it is the old polyester seat and you can see it has been cut into two pieces because the guy that used to drive the car was fairly big and he wouldn't fit so he chopped it in two pieces. I don't know why he did that because to me that was very unsafe and on top of that the seat was only fixed to the frame with some tie wraps through these holes. So I already have removed that seat, now we're going to build a brand new seat. And I'm planning to build the seat with aluminum of 1.5 millimeters thick. I could be using a TIG to assemble the seat, but I'm not very good in welding aluminum, so I'm going to avoid it as much as I can. And to assemble everything, I'm going to use instead blind rivets. Now typically people make a polyester shell which is of a fairly large size so you can actually fit different drivers or pilots into the car. Now to adapt the seat to a specific driver then people put a bag in with expanding foam. The driver goes and sits on the bag and then the foam expands and it shapes towards his body. And I have already one here, uh, this is an old one that I have and here you can see this is actually foam and this is how it's been created. So the shape right here, this is how this specific driver would fit in flush. So this goes then into the polyester seat. Now I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm going to create an aluminum seat, which is just a fit for my size. So I'm going to measure my chest, my hips, so that I have a real tight fit. I don't need foam on my race car for that purpose because I'm the sole driver. So let's start. Once the seat was removed, I applied some wooden planks and some insulation board just to have that shape where my seat is supposed to come fitted to my size. And you could use whatever you want to use for that purpose, but this way it works out quite well. So I took the dimensions of my bottom plate of the seat and uh, for that I was sitting in the car on some pieces of wood and some insulation so I could really take the measurements. So once I've took the measurements I was able to transfer it to a template which is just a piece of hard paper. So here I'm measuring all that up, uh, making sure that everything fits as it's supposed to fit. And with that template then I transferred the dimensions to my aluminum panel and I just cut it. So here I did bend the aluminum panel where I needed to. Uh, you can use a brake for that or you can use any other thing like a big metal tube to make the proper curves. And this is what we've done here. So then it's important uh, to check it out and see how it feels when you sit in a car. Because you want to be right. at the right place, you want to be at the right height, and you want to be able to control the pedals because otherwise you might that have feels good. So you need to be comfortable driving, uh, steering, and stick shift. So now it was time for the side panels. And again, here I'm using some hard paper and I already cut out form on that and now it's just a matter of trimming it a little bit and then I'm going to transfer this template onto the aluminum panel and trace around it and then finally I, I will actually start uh, cutting that out. Not really all very complicated and no matter what shape you want to make this is uh, fairly easy to do. There we go, so now we can actually cut it out and it was a little bit tough with the snips because that aluminum is quite thick. So here we have our rough uh, shape, so now it's just a matter of cleaning up the edges and making sure everything is smooth and then again we go going to double check it on the card just to make sure that you know everything is still aligned and here we go putting it in. Now we are far from home yet because we still have to do a lot of adjustments. But this uh, started to look a little bit like it. And here we're trimming a little bit extra here and there. I'm using aluminum, which is 1.5 millimeter thick. So this is not really thick and I want to give it some extra strength. And the way to give a panel extra strength is to roll a bead on it. And here you see the bead. You see that? It's like uh, an indent on one side and it's lifted on the other side and it makes the whole panel far more rigid. So this is what we're going to use, the bead roller to create beads to have more strength onto the panel, make it more rigid. So on the race car we want to keep the weight down. This is why we're going for aluminum of 1.5 millimeter. 
But at the same time, it has to be strong. And that's why we can actually roll a beat, as you've seen, but we can also use a die. And here you see an opening or a hole that we created with a die. And if you look in the back, here you go, and hopefully you can see that, you can see that we have a color around it. And that color is gonna make it stronger. So here with a die of this shape, we reduce weight and we create more strength into the panel. So this is what we're going to apply as much as we can on the seat we're going to build. So here I'm just putting the beads up and those are two different wheels, a male and a female one. You can get them in different sizes. Uh, my bead roller actually is only suitable for uh, metal panels up to 1.2 millimeters for steel, but aluminum, I can stretch it to about 1.5 mil. So that is not really an issue. So before I start, I always do a trial, and here I have a little piece of aluminum I left over, some scrap, and I'm putting some pressure up, and then I'm turning the wheel and see how that bead is going, and I adjust it wherever necessary, and I count the turns on um, how much pressure I put on it. Um, it is a lot better if you have somebody turning the wheel for you, uh, because now I have to steer the panel and turn the wheel, and I probably should have locked my bead over to the floor which I didn't do because I like to move it around. But here you see the bead that I just put in the panel and it makes it a lot more stiff. So here's our first side panel and I'm going to roll the beads before I assemble it onto the seat because otherwise I can't do it anymore. And in this case, I'm gonna roll the beads in such a way that the um, sticking out part of the bead is at the inside of the seat. So you will see that I'm rolling fairly slowly here just to make sure that I stay straight on that line. And I've, I've marked those lines on the aluminum panel and I will do exactly the same thing on the second panel. And here is our panel um, completely finished. Now it's time to look at it on the bench and see how it looks like. And I think this works out quite well. You would think this is flimsy a bit, but really it is quite uh, stiff. Now let's try it again and it does fit properly so I'm happy with that. So now it's time to make the connection part between uh, the two uh, panels. So the side panel and the seating panel or the back panel. And for that I'm using a 40 millimeter aluminum strip which I'm going to mark right in the middle where I want to bend it. So I'm going to bend it at uh, 20 millimeters. And here I'm scribing that line where I need to bend it. And then I'm going to put it in the bench and line it all out. And actually then uh, create that uh, bend into that panel. And here you have that. And you just need to line it up. You can see the line I just put up. So I'm going to push it uh, or bend it to about uh, 90 degrees. Now this is pretty tough because... I can only work on the bench up to about, oh, let's say 1.2 millimeters, and this is 1.5 millimeters, or one meter. So this is a pretty tough turning. So, but it worked out. So here you have that squared angle, and that's where the two panels will come in. So this is the squared piece of aluminum that we just bended on the brake. And as you can see, we already uh, placed a bend on it like this by actually shrinking the material on the shrinker. Now here we have the shrinker and on the other side I have a stretcher and by and these are just teeth that are opening up they're pushing the metal together or they push the metal away from each other and this is how you can create uh, curves and bends in this kind of profiles. So now I need to do this in different places so I come to the same shape and form of the side panels and the back panel of the seat and then I can rivet panels on both sides and create the seat. So here's our panel and I already have now attached briefly the profile on it, the connecting profile between the back panel and the side panel. So now I'm going to clip it in place uh, so that it can't move anymore because I need to drill some holes and I want to make sure that the two panels are very well pressed against each other because that's going to give it its strength. So I'm drilling holes for the rivets. Uh, these are four millimeter holes and the rivets are also four millimeters. They are called blind uh, rivets actually. And they are pretty tough to snap off. So I always had to do it in two steps. Tighten them up first and then the second phase like you see here.
to make sure that the steel rod or nail snaps off because I couldn't grab the snaps uh, otherwise. So here we have one side done as you can see and I'm trying to fit it in the car to see how it will look like and I think this is quite alright. Uh, so now it was time to connect the second uh, side to it and I'm just finishing it up here with the rivets at the inside and I'm using you know some spanners to keep everything properly in place. So here is that seat, far from complete but ready to go into the car and test it out. Now remember the seat dimensions here are fit for me, uh, they may not fit for somebody else because the seat might be too narrow or maybe too wide, it all depends how big or how small you are. But it doesn't matter as I said before because I am actually uh, preparing this seat for myself and for nobody else. Now remember this seat is still sitting on a piece of foam and some wood underneath. Um, that is something we'll do when we have the support panel in the back. So here is a seat that we have just assembled and you can see where we have all the rivets along the side. We also have then rivets on the bottom so that holds the bottom part together with the sides. You can see the beads on the sides to make it stronger but also the beads in the back. These are indents in the back because I don't want to wrap it my back against these beads. On the side they are uh, facing to the inner side. Now there's still a couple of things we need to do on this seat because it's far from complete. As you notice we have very sharp edges here and um, that's what we need to avoid. Uh, we need to make sure that we cannot cut ourselves. In the front we have another problem still. We need to bend this down and protect the edges. But also on the top here we have a lid or a piece which is still sticking out. This will have to bend backwards once we have done the back support. And of course we still need to make the holes in the seat where the seat belts are going to come through and also for the leg support we need to make two holes. So there's still a quite a bit of work to be done on this seat before this is going to be ready. Now to protect the edges here there's all kind of things you can do but I'm going to use a tube, an aluminum tube which I'm going to cut open on one side. So I'm going to cut a slit in it just on one side with a very thin disc so I can actually slide it over the edge and then bend it into the form or the shape of this side here. And then I will have a very nice uh, edge and I'm going to weld it, yes, uh, on the sides uh, with a TIG just in specific places so it doesn't get loose. Um, if you don't want to weld you can also make brackets over it that also will work and then use a pop rivet. Uh, I might want to show you that as well just in case my welding wouldn't work. Whoops, that's not the idea that it falls over, but okay. So, um, with any further ado, let's start. This is the aluminum tube that I actually have placed right in there, over here. And it's caught between this outer bar and a piece of wood underneath. And then on top of it, I have a metal panel, which I can slide along with my cutter, so I can have a straight cut onto the tube. So that should just work out fine. Uh, I made sure that the metal plate is just right in the middle of the tube. Because cutting one side of a tube in a straight line isn't always that easy. And I'm using a very, very thin disc. Let me show you that, how thin that is. This is the actual disc and it is about, I think, close to 1.2 millimeters. So it's very close to the thickness of my panel. But since I'm going to move around a little bit while I'm cutting it, uh, I think this will just work out fine. So let's start uh, to cut it. So here is our cut the tube and now I can just slide in the panel. It's a little bit tough but that's how it's supposed to go in. So let's do it on the seat and see how it goes. Now with the tube on top of the edge we have a very smooth surface and I wanted to lock it in place by welding the aluminum.
Now, I did try and I had not a lot of success. I'm not a good welder in, with aluminum, so any advice is more than welcome. So if anybody lives close by to me, I invite you to come over and try it out with my uh, AC TIG because I wasn't able to do it. So instead, I decided to create some brackets that go over it. So it's just a piece of aluminum which I bent and then I put a rivet through it to hold that firmly into place. And that just works fine. So let me give you a little bit of a close-up and then I'm gonna show you on how I actually made these uh, little brackets. And this is how I'm holding that tube in place with these very small brackets. And to create the brackets, I'm using 1.5 millimeter aluminum strips that I have left over uh, from uh, making the seat. And now I'm gonna bend it around a bit, which is the same dimensions as the tube. And now I'm just gonna take a piece of aluminum and I'm just gonna bend it around it. There we go. And then I'm gonna cut it off to the right length. Now I also always like to start a little bit longer with the pieces because that makes it easier to bend. So I'm going to place it back. Now I did cut it to length. And now I'm just gonna use some pliers uh, to squeeze it together. And this is now the right size. And you can see it's even a little bit tight, but that's good. So here I have the brackets, so now we can install them. So here's our bracket. So I'm just gonna clamp it a little bit in place so I can drill the hole. Here's our rivet. So we're going to stick that through the hole and then we should be all set. And this is our seat, all finished now. It's very lightweight and it's pretty rigid. So now we need to fit it into the car and then take care of the backside here, this flange, where we need to make a support towards the frame of the race car. Uh, that's gonna be a paper copy first. So we're gonna do this with a hard paper and then glue it together and then we have a model and then we can cut it out in aluminum and then we can create this whole panel and then we can start bolting things down. Now remember that the seat is still missing the side holes here where the seat belts come through and also some holes over here where the straps for the legs needs to come. So it's gonna lose some weight. So if you're interested in the weight, let's put it on the scale and see. The scale is maximum five kilograms. So let's put the seat up and see what we got. Make sure it doesn't hit the ground anywhere because then I would be cheating. And the total weight is 2.5 kilograms. So that's not bad at all. And we're gonna lose some weight when we cut the holes. And here is the polyester seat. Hopefully I can place it on there. And I'm not gonna try not to cheat, but you can see roughly it's two kilograms 600. And that's even with a missing part and already the cutouts. And I think this is looking quite good. Now the most important part right now is to position it so I have equal spaces on left and right because I have to create this back panel here. Right now <clears throat> I'm creating the template for the seat support board or panel. So I'm just marking where I need to cut, where I need to fold. So this is the final template for the support panel. So now I'm going to cut it out and then fold it and see how it actually fits. So this is the place where the model will come in. And you can actually see that this is going to fit. It's just a little bit of fiddling for the moment because it's cardboard. But that's gonna fit just nice. So now I need to cut it out of aluminum and do the final adjustments and then we should be good to go. So this is the template we just fitted and now all I need to do is uh, to transfer that template onto the aluminum panel. All right, 
I'm just going to tape it on here so it doesn't go away. So this is the panel that we have just cut and of course I still need to bend all the flanges on it. I already did one as you can see and I made a hole. But before I do so I'm going to roll some beads onto this panel because I want to give it some extra strength. And I'm rolling this slowly, trying to say on my track. Bending the flanges is easy if you have a break, especially if you have one where you can remove the uh, bending knives or whatever you call them. So I have different sizes. So depending on the width of the flange or the length, I should say, you put different uh, knives in to bend. Uh, so that's pretty easy to do. So here's our panel. So this flange I need to move up. This one I need to move down. So I'm going to bring it up to the edge here. Here I'm going to bend the flange without the break because it works as well just with some pieces of metal. All right, so this is the panel that we just created. And let's see if we can fit it. So it's going to go in like this, as you can see. And uh, we're going to bolt it down on the sides, two bolts there, two bolts here. And then the seat will then rest against the side here and also on those two extensions. So uh, I still have to fit the seat and lock the seat into place with that flap that goes on top of it. The opening that you see here, this is to get to the fuel tank. So uh, I need to protect my hands a bit on this edge here. So I'm going to put some plastic um, edge protection up and you'll see that in a second. And I still need to clean it up here and there. Not everything is uh, really clean as it should be. So um, let's do that first. So this is the opening to which we got access to the gas tank. And of course, these edges are pretty sharp, so I'm going to put some protection up. And you just need to push that in there. And you can get this stuff in all kinds of sizes. And really good stuff, you know, for this kind of work. So that's it. So now you can't cut yourself anymore. So the back panel is now installed. I also fitted the seat loosely just to see where it would fit. And I still have to lock it down to the back panel. And for that, I will use some bolts. To fix the seat to the frame, I'm going to use these blind nuts. And all you need to do is drill a hole, then put this blind nut in it, and then squeeze it with the pliers. But I also need to do something on the top here, on that flange. That's the bar that I'm going to install in the back of the seat uh, on the support panel. But before I install it, I'm going to do some cutouts because I don't want to have the tube open. So I'm going to cut out the slice and then I'm going to bend it and I can actually then put it all back together so the hole is closed. So now I should be able to take the piece out. It's still a little bit warm because aluminum conducts heat very well. So here is our bar that we're going to rivet in place uh, against the back of the seat. So now I'm about to bend the top part of the seat. So I locked it on my welding table and then I put some grips up and some bars so I can bend it properly. I think this will be all right. So now it's time to put the blind nut in and this is the blind nut. So I already drilled the hole to the right size. Now I need to connect this blind nut to my pliers and you will need to adjust your pliers depending on the kind of blind nuts that you're using. Um, and then adjust the amount of turns. just needs to sit flush, counter lock, put it in, 
and squeeze the pliers and then unlock it. And it's ready. So we can actually put a bowl in there. These are what we call dies, and you can stamp out any form out of a piece of metal depending on what kind of a die you have. Now, I'm going to make three holes in this panel because this is an extra panel that goes at the bottom of the seat, so I won't slide too much forward. So that's why I have this little edge here because I was sliding a little bit too much forward, and, uh, and I know you have straps be between your legs to hold you so you don't slide too far forward but these straps well are not always all that fun in between your legs so and by the way these dies are not expensive guys this is around 16 euros so really um all right now sometimes you might have to knock out this top part once you've cut it and that's what I just did and this is the end result and that looks pretty cool and it makes the panel actually quite stiff as well so here is the panel we just created and I think uh, this is looking quite nice we're going to lock it down on the edges uh, and in the middle uh, with just a simple a bolt and over here we have the bolts that are already holding down the seat so that should be okay so the only thing left now is to make an opening right here so I can put these uh, seat belts through or the straps for the legs so that is still to be done so folks the seat is ready and it fits nicely into the car I have bolted it down as you can see and it just fits perfectly so here you see the back panel and how the seat is attached to the back panel the straps for the legs, I did feed them to the center in the front of the seat, as you can see. And I did punch some holes just to reduce the weight. So folks, we're getting near to the end of this video. And uh, I really enjoyed building this uh, racing seat. It was a lot of fun, a lot of work, because it took me about six hours to build this. I still need to do a couple of other small things, like adjusting the seat belts. Uh, but that's just a minor thing. And I also need to take care of the steering wheel because since I moved the seat a bit forward about this much now I'm getting too close to the steering wheel so I need to move that inwards a bit now there's an adjustment for that so that is not that hard uh, the other thing I might want to do is actually to uh, put some foam inside and I'm just going to show you now before I stop the video on what type of foam it is and where I'm going to place it I'm not going to lock it down into it uh, or glue it I'm just gonna place it in there as an insert and here is the foam which is gonna go in loosely I'm not gonna glue it but this is going to be a bit more comfortable to drive not a lot but enough for me because I'm an old guy so I want to have a bit of comfort so guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one thank you for viewing